The coral reef ecosystem is one of the most unique habitats on the planet, and the same can be said for the creatures that call it home. With hundreds of species and thousands of individuals all competing for the same resources, specialization is vital to survival, and the aquatic life here demonstrates this fact perfectly. We've already shown you some of the smaller species found on the reef, and in this episode we'll be focusing on the larger, higher trophic level species and how they fit into this bustling underwater world. If you guys are ready, let's take a look at what makes the reef dwelling fish of BVI just so incredible. Perhaps no species embodies the adage of safety in numbers better than grunts. These schooling fish will congregate in groups of over a thousand individuals to protect themselves against predators while they feed. We encounter two species of grunts while exploring the reefs of BVI, the French grunt and the blue striped grunt. These species will actually form large schools together, and it's not uncommon to see blue striped and French grunts congregating in the same area. Grunts feed on shrimp, krill, and other small invertebrates, and will usually hang around reefs and sandy flats. The yellowtail snapper is another schooling fish found throughout the British Virgin Islands and the rest of the Caribbean. Yellowtail snappers are plentiful in the reef ecosystem, and will inhabit coral outcrops and sandy banks. They feed mostly on smaller fish, but will also eat crustaceans as well, and because their diets are so similar with that of grunts, grunts and snappers will actually form large hybrid schools while they feed. This symbiotic relationship provides protection for both species, as there are more individuals present to keep an eye out for predators. On any coral reef snorkeling adventure, we'd see thousands of incredible species, but one group always stood out from the rest. Parrotfish. Though they're an absolutely iconic fish to come across, they can be pretty difficult to identify. This is because parrotfish go through three life stages, juvenile, initial, and terminal, and their colors change in each stage. Even though we filmed parrotfish of many colors, we actually only got one species on camera, the stoplight parrotfish. These guys will range in color from mottled white and reddish brown in their juvenile and initial phases, to a stunning mix of blue, green, and yellow later in life, so their color can actually be used to denote their age. Most of the parrotfish we filmed were in their terminal or adult phase, which is perhaps the most well-known variant of this species. Their vibrant blue-green bodies and yellow stripes contrast greatly against many other fish on the reef. Parrotfish also serve an important purpose in the reef ecosystem. They make sand! Like most parrotfish species, stoplight parrotfish are coral eaters, and they use their sharp beaks to break off chunks of coral from the reef. The coral skeletons don't actually provide any nourishment, but the polyps that live on the surface of the coral make up the majority of the stoplight parrotfish's diet. Once the parrotfish digests the polyps, they break down the limestone skeleton and excrete it as sand. Because they'll return to the same feeding location over and over again, parrotfish can actually help to grow the reef by adding more sand to the ecosystem. This incredible adaptation reduces competition for food, and makes parrotfish true ecosystem architects. In an ecosystem dominated by intense competition for resources, sometimes the best strategy is to work together to increase the odds of survival. This is the strategy of the barjack, a schooling fish found along shallow reefs all over the tropical Atlantic. These guys form large schools within their own species to protect against predators, but the barjack takes this symbiotic approach one step further. The yellow goatfish is a bottom-feeding specialist, using unique sensory organs on their jaw to detect crustaceans and small fish underneath the sand. Barjacks have learned to trail goatfish while they feed, and as the goatfish uncovers hidden prey, the jacks swoop in and eat whatever the goatfish doesn't get to. This symbiotic relationship is mutualistic, meaning both species benefit, as the jacks get a meal and the goatfish get some extra protection. Now, symbiosis is a very effective behavioral adaptation for reef fish, but it can only take them so far. To truly survive in an ecosystem as densely populated as a coral reef, fish need to physically adapt to suit their niches. This habitat has spawned some bizarre-looking species, but as crazy as they may appear, fish like the common squirrelfish are perfectly designed for their role as nocturnal hunters. 
Their large eyes assist them in foraging in the dark, and their powerful tails serve to propel them away from the many larger predators that prowl the reef at night. As strange as the squirrelfish looks, however, there are some species that have pushed their adaptations even further. The Western Atlantic Trumpetfish, a member of the same family as pipefish and seahorses, has specialized greatly to suit their habitat, as has the smooth trunkfish, one of the most personable species we encountered while exploring the islands. Trunkfish are instantly recognizable by their bizarre appearance. I mean, this family really has earned the name boxfish. But this design is yet another example of effective evolution. Due to their unconventional shape and slippery scales, this species is remarkably hard to grab onto, keeping it safe from the many predators that would eat a fish of that size. Additionally, the smooth trunkfish will secrete poison from its body if threatened, and these adaptations allow it to forage unopposed, even in open areas. Considering the smooth trunkfish spends a lot of time with its head down in the sand or in crevices looking for aquatic worms and crustaceans to eat, it's a pretty good thing that they have their back covered. In order for any ecosystem to function properly, there have to be predators to keep the populations of other species in check. One of the best adapted predators we encountered is the common sand diver, a member of the lizardfish family. This species is an ambush hunter, using its cryptic coloration as camouflage as it lies in wait for prey. Sand divers are what are known as demersal fish, meaning that they live and hunt on the sea floor. In order to do this, they use their pectoral fins to prop them up as they wait in ambush, and their large eyes scan the area all around them for potential prey. They feed on any fish, cephalopod, or crustacean small enough to fit in their mouth, and will strike at passing prey with blinding speed. One interesting thing about the common sand diver is that they are usually found at depths between 120 and 360 feet, far deeper than we could ever dive. Despite this, we actually encountered quite a few on the shallow reefs, probably there because of the high density of potential prey items, which are a draw for any predator. Thus far in our reef explorations, we've covered many species that make up the lower or mid-tier trophic levels. Each one of these species is part of a delicate balance of life, but the question remains, what really keeps that balance? The answer? The apex predators of the coral reefs. In our final episode from the British Virgin Islands, we're going to show you the species who dominate this ecosystem and get you an up-close look at the strategies they use to survive. Excited? Subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers now so you catch the conclusion to our Caribbean adventure and all of the new videos we have planned for the near future. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed, and tell us any thoughts you have in the comments. See you soon, everyone!